Hey friends, welcome to Wild Hearts Homestead. Today on the agenda, we need to separate the cream and the milk to make some butter, make some yogurt, and then turn some of that yogurt into cheese, all from our sheep milk. It is 6.30 a.m. The chickens have already been given food and water and let out for the day. So now let's go get ready to go milk. All right, first I need a jar with water, a dash of cast aisle soap, and then I throw in two or three rags. This is for cleaning the udders. Oops. Goes into my pail. Then I need my small jar for milking into and my larger jar for pouring that milk into to bring back to the house. What I've been doing lately is just going ahead and putting my cheesecloth right in this jar so that I'm not having to come back and strain it into another jar and having more dishes to wash. So that goes in here and this goes in here. And then of course the baby monitor goes with me and I'm going to bring a lid for this jar so that no bugs or anything get into it while I'm milking. My normal routine is to try to get up before the kids. If I have to leave for work, I'll be up at 5.30 and get all my morning chores done, get a shower, get the kids breakfast made, get bags packed, and get out the door. Today, I don't have to go to work, so I can sleep in a little bit. Six o'clock is sleeping in over here. And have a more relaxed morning with the chores. Good morning, Miss Margo. You ready for milk? Good morning, sugar. You girls ready? Now go turn the fence off. I don't know if I love that fence yet. Every time a thunderstorm comes through, it gets knocked down and my sheep have the potential of getting out. And I have like the extra support posts in there too. I don't know. So I, I am not fully decided on if I love the electric fencing yet. fresh, delicious milk. Isn't that pretty? We get to see the most beautiful sunrises and sunsets. The way to have the best tasting milk is to get it strained and chilled as quickly as possible, and also to take really good care of your animals. You always want to check your cheesecloth, make sure there's no indicators of mastitis going on or anything concerning. I only see a couple specks of hair in here, nothing to be worried about. And then I always date my jars and put AM or PM. And then into the fridge it goes. Now I'm going to grab a quick shower and get ready for the day and then I'll meet you guys back in the kitchen to make some breakfast and start working with our milk. To clean my cheesecloth, I do not throw it in the washing machine. I rinse off all anything on there and then boil it. That is the way to get it clean without getting a lot of lint on it. Then after it cools from boiling, if you have any kind of smell, 
you can add in um, a little bit of baking soda and vinegar and then rinse it out once it is cool and hang it to dry. Am I the only one that when I see somebody doing a kitchen video and it's super clean, I'm like, show me the other side of your kitchen. What's on the other side of your kitchen? And what did it look like before you did this video? If your kitchen is a working kitchen and is not spotless, solidarity, we're here. I actually cleaned this spot just for you. I actually clean my kitchen a lot, not that you would know it, but I also cook a lot. I cook everything at home, so there's always, there's always more dishes. But one of my tricks is, when I'm working in the kitchen, I wash dishes, so that I'm not just standing here waiting for something to boil, I'm also getting some cleaning done. But then when I'm done cooking, there's more dishes. Here is some of our homemade butter. We're gonna make some eggs for breakfast. It's so good. It doesn't turn yellow like cow milk butter though, so just keep that in mind as we're making butter that it will not be yellow, it'll be white. My dishwasher does not work, so everything has to be hand washed, so my dishwasher is pretty much just a drying rack. I saw this meme one time. By the way, memes are a legitimate love language, and it's my love language. But anyways, I saw this meme one time that said, behind every awesome picture is a mom shoving crap out of the way. And if that isn't true, I don't know what else is. But you will get real life here. You will not get picture perfect in a magazine. And real life is messy kitchens and lots of dishes and toddlers making more messes. <laughs> All right, let's get started. We're going to be doing the butter and the yogurt at the same time. So you're going to need a food processor and an instant pot. If you don't have an instant pot, you can also use a crock pot. You can do this on the stove. You just need a way to keep the temperature solidly at the same temperature for a extended period of time. So something like the Instant Pot with the yogurt button or a crock pot that kind of stabilizes that temperature is a great one to have in your kitchen. You can also do the butter in a stand mixer. I've seen that done too. So you have lots of resources on YouTube also if you want to look for different methods of making these products as well. I'm gonna start by getting out my jars of milk. See the cream lines on here? If you let the milk sit for 24 to 48 hours, that cream will rise to the top and the skim milk will be down here on the bottom and it's easier to scoop that cream out. I've been drinking a lot of the milk fresh, so it's taken me a little longer to save up for butter. So what we do is we're going to scoop that cream off and put it into the food processor. And you can tell when you're hitting the milk because the milk is a little bit more yellow and the cream is more white colored. But if you get a little bit of that milk, the skim milk in there, don't worry, it'll be totally fine. Once I've got that cream out of there, I'm gonna give it a good swish to make sure I'm not missing any of the good stuff and then this is gonna get poured into the Instant Pot. Then I'm just gonna do that with every single one of my jars until I have all the cream out and the milk in the Instant Pot. All right, we've got our cream in the food processor and our skim milk in the Instant Pot. You can absolutely use the milk whole if you want to. You don't have to separate the cream out for making yogurt. I just want the butter from it, but you don't have to do that. First time you make butter, it's going to feel like it takes forever, and you're going to be wondering, is it even going to work? But I promise you, this works. So what we're going to do is turn our food pros processor on high.
I scrape all this stuff down in here so that if any of the whipped cream didn't get blended into butter, then I will take out what butter is in there and mix it again and we'll get the rest of it turned into butter as well. Now we can scoop out those butter solids into a bowl, just use a slatted spoon. We wanna get all of the liquid out and we will use that for something else. None of this is going to go to waste. But you can see how the butter is white. It is not yellow like cow's, cow's milk butter. But it tastes amazing, even if it doesn't have a yellow color to it. And my sheep do eat a lot of grass. It's, from what I read, it was something about the way that sheep process carrot, keratin, I believe. Like the stuff that makes um, it yellow. It just doesn't go into their milk for some reason. All right, I'm gonna give it one more blend just to make sure we didn't miss any of that whipped cream turning into butter. It's pretty soft. I've seen people wash it with their hands, but I prefer to wash it in the bowl. You're going to run cold water over the milk, oh, over the butter and just kind of squish it around until there is no more buttermilk coming out of the butter. You can see how this water in here is kind of milky. Careful as you're dumping it that you don't lose your butter. usually takes about three times of doing this for the butter to come out clean. See how clear this water is compared to the first time? Now at this point I sprinkle in some salt. I don't measure it, I just eyeball it. And then I stir the salt into the butter. And then if any more water comes out, I dump that water out. And now our butter is ready to go in the fridge. And as I'm using it, when I take it out of the fridge, if there's any liquid in there, I just dump it out. And there you have made your very own butter from your sheep's milk. As always, I write the day on there and what the product is all right. Butter, 726 on here. Now the buttermilk, I pour into a jar and do the same thing, mark it as buttermilk and the date. And the buttermilk gets used in making any kind of product that's getting cooked, like scrambled eggs or pancakes, any kind of baking. The milk solids or like the butter in there isn't going to bother anything and it's actually going to make it taste even better but you don't want to i mean you're not going to want to drink little chunks of butter because there are still little bits of butter like this in that milk but it's great for baking 
Now we're gonna move on to making the yogurt. We've got all of our milk in here. We are going to plug in our Instant Pot. Oh, I'm gonna have to move it, it's not long enough. So first we're going to put our Instant Pot on saute to heat up the milk. We need to heat up the milk between 180 and 185 degrees. You can do this if in your crock pot, like I said. What I would recommend is heating your milk up on the stove and then cooling it down and transferring it into your crock pot if you're gonna do it that way, uh, unless you have, want to let it sit in the crock pot for like four hours or so. You will also need some cheesecloth and a thermometer. As it's heating up, you're gonna to wanna to stir it every now and then to make sure it doesn't get a film on top. We're getting close. When you're taking the temperature, you wanna make sure that you're not touching the bottom of the pan. You want it a little bit above that so that you're not getting a false reading of temperature, but we are just about at 180. So we are going to Give it one more minute, maybe. I like to make sure that I'm stirring it when I do the temperature also so that it's not just one warm spot or one cold spot. And then we're going to turn off the Instant Pot. And we are going to remove the insert. And I like to put mine on a rack so that it has some more airflow to cool. And we're gonna let this cool down to between 110 and 119 degrees. Do the same thing as it's cooling. Every now and then I come by and give it a little swish. Stirring it helps release the heat. See how much steam is coming out of there while I'm stirring it. So stirring it will help release the heat if you're trying to get it to cool down faster. Uh, but I just let it sit. You can do an ice bath if you want to do it faster, but it works totally fine to just let it sit. And then if I forget that it's there, it doesn't cool down too fast. Right where we need to be, so now we're going to add in our yogurt. So for every half gallon, you're going to do a fourth cup of yogurt starter. This can just be any yogurt that you got from the store. Whatever is a good tasting plain yogurt. When I started my sheep milk yogurt, I just got cow milk yogurt from the store and used that as my first starter. You wanna make sure that you incorporate that yogurt very well into your heated milk. Since this is just between a half gallon and a whole gallon, I just used a heaping spoonful of a quarter cup. Once you make your yogurt for the first time, you'll save some out for your next batch, so you'll never have to buy any kind of yogurt starter again. Once that is nice and stirred in, we're gonna put it back into our Instant Pot. Now we're gonna put the lid on without a seal. And we are going to hit the yogurt button. Now how long you want your, and you want this to be venting also, sorry. You want it on venting, not on pressure. Um, so how long you keep your yogurt in here is really a preference. I prefer to have my yogurt about eight hours. I don't like my yogurt to be super tangy, so I leave it in about eight hours, but you can leave it up to 24 hours depending on how tangy you like your yogurt to taste. Our yogurt should be done. Let's see what we have. You can smell it coming out of the vent. It smells so good. It's perfectly normal for there to be a little bit of yellow liquid on top. This is part of the way. Look how thick this yogurt is. Beautiful. Now, if you just want yogurt, you can stop right here. Add your sweetener of choice, and I like to put vanilla in mine. My favorite kind of yogurt is vanilla yogurt, so the last time I made a whole gallon, don't be shocked, I put two cups of sugar in it 
and two I had to look two teaspoons of vanilla into my yogurt you can put a little bit of sugar at a time and taste it to see how you like it and then that is your final step bottle it up put it in the fridge and your yogurt is good to go if you want to take this one step further we are going to turn this yogurt into cream cheese and the other half of it we're going to turn into frozen yogurt now for this step you're going to need something for the whey to drain into I like to use a pot and then I also put a colander on top I have done where you can string it up and hang it to like the hook on your cabinet but I like to leave my door open a lot and so I find it safer to strain the yogurt while it's in the fridge it's safe from any kind of insects coming in from outside next we're going to line our colander with a cheesecloth This will keep our yogurt from falling through as it's draining and it will allow all the way to drain out into the bottom. All right, so we're gonna pour this yogurt into the cheesecloth. And then we're gonna save the rest of this out for making frozen yogurt. So I just twisted up a little bit and then this is going into the fridge to sit overnight and then in the morning it will be cream cheese. I don't tend to measure a lot of stuff while I'm cooking so to this yogurt I'm just going to add a little bit of sugar at a time until it tastes right and then add in a dash of vanilla. Then that is going to get poured into a 9 by 13 pan and it will go into the freezer to become solid. Don't forget to take out some yogurt starter for your next batch before you add anything to your yogurt. That tastes good. I did just a third cup of yogurt because this isn't a whole gallon and it tastes good, it tastes good. And here we have homemade frozen yogurt. So we put it in the freezer and then after it's frozen, cut it into chunks put it into the food processor and blend it up. Don't add anything to it. It'll just puree it really nicely and then you can portion it into the jam size containers and put it back in the freezer to enjoy in small portions. Thank you, helper. This one is a cantaloupe sorbet that we made in the same kind of way. It's just pureed cantaloupe with a little bit of lemon juice and sugar. Whoops, freeze it. You want it back, you're gonna finish eating it. Um, and then you puree it in here to make it smooth. I put it into the small jam size containers and store it in the freezer. And then one of these is a good portion for Ellie and I to share. Okay, once you guys learn how to make this, you will never have to buy ice cream ever again. You can add whatever additives you want to it, like chocolate or fruit, or sprinkles. You can put whatever you want in it. I just did vanilla and sugar in this one. It's the next morning and I just pulled our cream cheese out of the fridge. so good the only thing left to do with this is you can mix in a dash of salt a little bit of salt 
and I just store it in a Tupperware in the fridge. Again, say what it is, date it, uh, and then we enjoy it in any way that we would use goat cheese. So we use it on tacos, I make it in quiches, I put it on salads, um, I use it for like when we make spaghetti squash with sauce, anything like that, I use this cheese on. It's so good, so good. Now what is left for making your cheese is the whey. It's like a yellow looking water. You can use this for making homemade ketchup, you can use it for making other kinds of cheeses. I keep a small jar of it in my fridge. You can use it to feed to your other animals, like your chickens or your pigs. You can even use it in your garden for your plants. I haven't explored all of its uses yet, but it has a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed this video about how to make your very own yogurt, butter, cream cheese, and frozen yogurt from your very own milk from your sheep. If you have any questions, please let me know. Sometimes I get so used to doing this stuff that I forget to mention some of the processes. So please leave a comment down below if you have any questions or comments about how to make any of these products. Thank you so much for being here today. It's always so fun having you here with me and I very much enjoy your company. I will see you guys next time. Bye.